If you want a podcast like a pro, sounding good and looking good is essential. And today we're gonna to cover everything you need to know for a variety of setups. Virtual podcasts using your laptop and a webcam, budget-friendly setups using your smartphone and a few hundred dollars worth of gear, all the way up to the ultra pro studio level setup. My name is Anthony Gallo from contentcreator.com. Let's dive in. Okay, so there are three major factors that we need to consider for all types of podcasts. In-person, virtual, big budget, low budget, I don't care. Always keep these things top of mind. Up first is obviously the audio. Podcasts are first and foremost, something that people listen to. You don't even need a video feed. So when it comes to investing money to improve your setup, focus on the audio first. Then after that, we have lighting and composition. Combine these two things together and they make up 90% of video image quality. And yes, camera gear obviously has an impact, but we've proven on this channel many times, the gear is secondary. An old smartphone with good lighting and composition will look better than a $5,000 camera with terrible lighting and composition. Throughout this entire video, we'll be going through a variety of podcast setups, walking through exactly how to manage these three factors to produce the best result possible given a certain budget. And up first, we have the most basic setup and most widely used format, a virtual podcast primarily using our computer. First, let's consider the audio as it's most important. Right now you're listening to the built-in microphone on my MacBook Pro, which I think sounds really good, but not all laptops and computers have decent built-in microphones and some don't even have microphones to begin with. So for people like you, I have three really budget-friendly options. Up first, we have a lavalier microphone like this Pop Voice Pro. It's $14 on Amazon and it's gonna instantly improve the sound of your audio. Normally you would just clip it to your shirt or use a Rycote sticky to stick it underneath your collar. All you need to do is plug it into the headphone jack of your computer and you're good to go. For the price, I don't think this can be beat. After that, we have a super versatile option. This is the Hollyland Lark M2 microphone. It's actually a Bluetooth microphone that will serve you well if you're shooting social media content, YouTube content, and also podcasts. I actually use this as a backup microphone during my podcast, just in case my main more expensive mics were to fail for some reason. These are super easy to use. It has like a magnetic clip that you can just use to put it on your shirt. From there, the signal goes to the wireless receiver that then plugs into your computer via a USB-C cable. Now our third and final option here is a bit more traditional to podcasting. It's a USB microphone. It is the Audio-Technica ATR2100X USB mic. For the price, I think the audio quality is extremely good. And what's really nice is this mic has a USB-C direct connection to your computer, but it also has an XLR jack, which is something that we'll talk a lot more about when we get to the more expensive options throughout this video. Now the audio Technica is a dynamic microphone, which is more common with podcast mics. Dynamic mics are really good at rejecting background noise. So if you're in an echoey room or a noisy environment with like kids running around in the background, try to get one of these. Now, if you're researching this stuff on the internet, you're probably gonna come across tons of people recommending the Blue Yeti USB mic. At one point in time, this was the most affordable and go-to USB microphone, but as of late, it's really fallen behind in quality compared to some of the newer options. And it's also a condenser microphone, not not a dynamic. This means it's gonna pick up on a lot more of that background noise, which is not ideal with podcasts. Now, throughout this video, we're gonna cover even more professional audio setups, including the one that I personally use in all of my podcast recordings. But for now, let's move on to the video side of things. To start, let's first see what we can do with the built-in webcam on your computer, if you have one, that is. On MacBook Pros, you can definitely get away with the built-in webcam for virtual interviews. But if you don't have a built-in webcam or the one you do have is absolutely terrible, I'd recommend getting the Razer Caillou webcam. It's a great affordable option that is more than good enough for virtual podcasts. So what you're seeing right now is video coming out of the Razer Caillou webcam. I think that looks really good, especially with that built-in ring light. It does help light up the face a little bit more. And then the audio here is the Audio-Technica microphone. So all in all, we're talking a really nice virtual podcasting setup for just a couple hundred dollars. Depending on your smartphone, you can also connect it and use it as a webcam as well. iPhones make this really easy. You can just select it as your video device and bam, you've now got an incredible looking webcam. Okay, now when it comes to composition and lighting, we'll keep it simple here and get more advanced with the future setups. One of the biggest things you can do to improve your composition is to raise the height of your computer or webcam. Don't place your laptop down on a desk and have it pointing back up at you. It's just a super unflattering angle. Get a laptop stand or raise the height of your desktop monitor so the camera is at a roughly eye level with you. From there, focus on organizing your background. Keep it symmetrical with your horizontal and vertical lines straight up and down and side to side. Now this next point is crucial. Avoid having super bright overexposed windows in your background. 
Webcams are not good at handling this much contrast with the bright and dark areas all in the same scene. It's just gonna wash out your image and make it look terrible. So shut the windows. If you've got a laptop, move into another room, whatever you have to do. Now, speaking of light, the most important thing is to actually have light hitting you, the subject, to begin with. These webcams all have extremely small sensors, so their image quality will fall off a cliff if there isn't enough light in the scene. So instead of having a window behind you, which doesn't help at all, maybe rotate your setup so that window's hitting you from the front, casting light actually on you as the subject. Or alternatively, you can buy a super affordable kit like the Mount Dog Kit or any of the other lighting kits that I have recommended in our gear guide, which you can find in the description. Placing one of these lights in front, off to the side, and slightly above you, it's gonna improve your setup so much. Now, another lighting tip, you generally don't want light hitting you from directly above. So like room lights, for example, if you've got an LED ceiling light, if that's hitting right on you, it's gonna cast unflattering shadows. It doesn't look good. So I'd recommend turning those off and relying either on a window or one of those professional lights that's hitting you from a more flattering angle and not directly above. Now that covers a very basic setup that won't cost much, but it will look and sound great. Now let's talk about using mirrorless cameras as webcams. Mirrorless cameras have larger sensors and lenses with larger apertures that will collect much more light and in turn, make your video look better. Not to mention, if you like that blurry background look, these larger sensors and apertures help with that as well. Every camera is slightly different, but connecting a camera as a webcam is pretty straightforward. All you need is an HDMI cable, and be careful to get the proper HDMI cable for your camera. There are full HDMI, micro, and mini HDMI options. From there, you want a video capture card like this guy here. It basically converts the video signal into a format that your computer can recognize and use as a webcam. There are expensive expensive options online like the Elgato capture cards, but I use this cheap one from Amazon and it's worked fine for me for years. I just duct tape the connections to make sure it never comes loose while recording. Now, some things to keep in mind if you're using a mirrorless camera as a webcam. First, check the recording limit on the camera. Lots of Canon cameras, for example, are limited to 30 minute recording sessions. So if you were recording, it would stop at 30 minutes and you'd have to hit record again. Now, if you're using the camera as a webcam, you technically don't need to hit record for the video feed to actually enter your computer. But a lot of people, myself included, like to actually record internally to the camera as well, just so I have a backup, you know, a super high resolution version of the video. And if you are doing that, you don't wanna have a 30 minute record limit. My favorite entry level mirrorless camera is the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II, which I've done a review on here on this channel. This camera can record for hours and it was built with streaming and podcasting in mind. And at the price, I don't think there are any other cameras that can beat it. Up next, you wanna consider the lens. Now, generally for podcasts, especially virtual ones where the camera is basically a webcam, you want a wide angle lens like this, giving you plenty of space to move around. Something in the 12 to 24 millimeter range is great for virtual podcasts. And what you're seeing right now is the Sigma 16 millimeter lens on the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. All right, now last, but certainly not least, when it comes to recording virtual podcasts, you need to seriously consider the platform or software that you're gonna use to actually record the podcast. Now, when I first started doing this, I did a ton of research and decided on Riverside as our go-to software for a variety of reasons, which I'll touch on in a second. Now, in prepping for this video, I did reach out to Riverside and ask if they'd wanna sponsor the video and they agreed, but I do really want you to know that I have literally been a paying customer of this company for a long time and whether or not they sponsored the video, they would be my number one recommendation. A long time ago, I used Zoom for recording virtual podcasts, but the issue with Zoom is, First, the video gets super compressed and it's lower quality even if you have a great camera. But even more important than that, if at any point during your call, someone's internet lags, because Zoom is using the internet to actually record the interview, when the internet lags, the video and audio will actually get corrupted and saved to the recording, which is terrible. You literally can't solve it. Now, Riverside, on the other hand, records everything locally to your computer, and then after the call, it uploads both the host and the guest's video and audio, eliminating the issue altogether. The recorded video also looks spectacular straight out of Riverside. Beyond 
Beyond that, there are tons of other helpful features for podcasters. Riverside has a great built-in editor that transcribes your content for easy text-based editing. It has audio enhancement features like noise reduction and auto leveling in case your guest's microphone is at a different volume level than yours. It even has a built-in AI short form content generator that will automatically find great clips within your longer interview and then create vertical social media edits. It adds captions and it gives you something that you can post immediately to social media to drive more awareness to your podcast. I can't recommend this software enough for content creators. And if you wanna get started for free with Riverside, I've got a link in the description of this video. Okay, now we are graduating from the world of virtual podcasts and entering the in-person world of podcasting where we have multiple subjects to consider with our audio, lighting, and composition. Things will obviously get more expensive in this section, but I'll do my best to walk through different budget options. With a traditional two-person podcast, there's obviously a ton of different ways that you could set up the actual podcast. I would say the two most popular formats are sitting across from each other at a table. And then the second setup is the slightly more casual approach I have here, where we have two chairs, not looking directly at each other, but instead angled slightly towards what we'll call the center camera. Now, when it comes to lighting these scenes, there are a ton of different options. The simplest and most cost-effective approach would be to use a lantern-based setup. We have an entire video on this channel that really dives deep on lighting, and I'd highly recommend checking that out after this video. But here we have a newer CB60 light with a newer lantern softbox. This setup really diffuses the light, which makes it more flattering, and it casts it in all directions, which is gonna hit all of your subjects. This is a great setup, but there are ways to drastically improve the look if you're willing to spend more money, and we'll touch on that throughout the video. Now, when it comes to our audio and our camera here, things get a little tied together depending on your setup. For example, you can definitely start with just your smartphone as a camera. And what you're seeing right now is my iPhone being used in a single wide angle setup. It's only one angle, but you can actually just punch in while editing to both speakers and switch back and forth, which kind of fakes the look of having more cameras. Just make sure to record in 4K so you have that extra resolution to crop in. But here's where the audio and the video kind of get tied together. You obviously have to consider the battery of your smartphone. A full battery should last for an entire interview, but ideally you'd want to have it plugged in. But if you do that, now you're using the USB-C port and you can't plug in a microphone. And you also can't plug in an external SSD drive if you have an iPhone and you want to record directly to an external drive. So it's kind of all tied together and there's obviously no right or wrong answer. You could do a ton of different things here, but if it were me, using this setup, I would just confirm before the interview that we have a ton of storage space on the phone. I'd delete a bunch of stuff to free it up and I'd make sure we have a full battery charge that's not gonna die. And then I would use the Hollyland Lark M2 that we talked about earlier. This has two mics in the kit, one for each subject. And it also has this really nice USB-C receiver that you plug into the phone. It's gonna automatically sync the audio from both speakers to the video, just making your life easier. Okay, now that we've got that covered, let's steadily upgrade things one piece of gear at a time. And up first, without a doubt, I would focus on the audio. Here we have my personal microphone of choice for podcasting, the Shure MV7X. These are extremely high quality microphones that still come in at under $200. Now, in case you didn't know, the most popular mic for podcasting is the Shure SM7B. All major podcasts use this microphone. It's kind of the gold standard, but it's always confused me a little. The Shure SM7B is $500 by itself, and it requires another device called a cloud lifter that essentially boosts the signal to actually make the microphone usable. So we're talking a lot of money just to get it to work. On the other hand here, we have the Shure MV7X that looks and sounds almost identical and it's hundreds of dollars less and it doesn't require you to use a cloud lifter or anything else to boost the signal. So to me, it's kind of a no brainer. To get this setup to work, you just need an XLR cable connecting the mics directly to an audio recording device. I personally use the Zoom H4n Pro. It has two XLR ports, which is perfect for connecting two mics. And then I can record the audio directly to the Zoom H4n Pro, or I can use a standard microphone cable to connect the Zoom to my Sony camera, which basically syncs the audio from the mics to the video all at the same time. Now I use the Zoom H4n Pro because it's what I already had and it gets the job done. If I were just starting today, I'd probably get the Rodecaster Duo. This has two XLR ports, so it works with two mics. It can record internally, 
It has super high quality preamps, so your audio will sound great. It is a nice physical interface, and it has a ton of built-in effects, so you can adjust your sound to get it exactly as you like. Now, other honorable mentions would be Focusrite and their Scarlett and Vocaster devices. If you're filming at a table, you can use these Samson MD5 stands, or if you prefer an adjustable arm style, here I've got the Elgato Wave microphone on. Okay, so now we've upgraded our audio. The next area that I would focus on is the cameras. First, I'd like to add a second camera. Now, rather than have one single wide angle view for both speakers, where we need to punch in and out for each speaker, I'd shift to having two more zoomed in angles, one on each speaker and no wide angle whatsoever. This is just a more intimate setup where you really get to see the reactions on the speaker's face, which I think translates over to the viewers better. You could have two smartphones set to the 1X or 5X cameras, depending on how far away they are from the subjects. Just make sure that whatever direction the speaker is looking has more space than the amount of space behind their head. In film, this is called looking room. Now upgrading again, here I have two Sony a7S III's. On one camera, I have a Sigma 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 lens zoomed all the way into 70 millimeters. And on the other camera, I have the Sigma 85 millimeter f1.4. Notice how this angle is slightly more zoomed in and has more background blur. That's because of the tighter 85 millimeter focal length and the lower f1.4 aperture. Then finally, upgrading this one more time, we'd add in a third wide angle camera in the center with both subjects in view. In a three camera setup for a podcast, this is the camera that I'm gonna cut to the least, but it is nice to still have just in case you wanna show both people. Here you're seeing a Sony FX30 with that Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 lens that we talked about earlier. And then in case you were wondering, the Sony ZV E10 Mark II that we also talked about earlier, it looks practically identical. The FX30 and the ZV E10 Mark II are both incredible cameras. Now, a couple things to consider when using mirrorless cameras in an in-person setup. First, you definitely wanna have a dummy battery, which you can plug into a wall, or if you have a camera with a USB-C port, you can just do what I do, which is plug a power supply directly into the USB-C. This will keep the cameras alive for the entire interview. Now, when it comes to actually recording on these cameras, what I do is I just hit record on all three cameras and I quickly sync those videos in the edit, or you could use something like an A10 Mini Pro, where you connect all three cameras via HDMI to the switcher, and that will control all the cameras at once. And then last, but certainly not least, if we wanna do one more major upgrade here, let's talk about the lighting. Up until this point, we've really just been using one light with a lantern diffuser hitting all of our subjects. This is good, but it creates what's known as broad lighting, where our entire scene is evenly lit. This may sound good, but it's honestly pretty boring and can make the video look a little flat and two-dimensional. Compare this scene, which is flat broad lighting, to this scene, and you'll probably get the point. Sometimes mixing in shadows is actually a good thing. Now doing this in a somewhat smaller room like we've got here can definitely prove to be a challenge, but it's not an impossible one. In a nutshell, rather than light our subjects from the front like we're doing now, we actually wanna try our best to light our subjects from behind. This creates a distinct bright and shadow side of the subject, causing much more depth. In Hollywood film, a general rule of thumb is that you film from the shadow side of the subject's face. This contrast between a bright and dark side creates more depth depth, which makes the video look more three-dimensional. And in our podcast setup here, lighting our subjects from behind creates that distinct contrast on their faces, which in my eyes looks much better. How we actually achieve this is gonna vary depending on your room, but most of the time it's gonna rely on using C stands to position the lights slightly above the subjects while also being out of frame. From there, both lights will point across the setup at the opposite subject. Now another key in this setup, rather than use lanterns, which will cast light in all directions, we actually use traditional soft boxes with grid attachments. The soft boxes will still diffuse the light and make it flattering, but those grids actually direct the light. It focuses it so it almost is like a beam that only hits the subject the light's pointing at. Unlike the lanterns that spread light everywhere, we're now controlling the light, which allows us to just hit the subjects where we want and give that bright and dark side of their faces. Okay, that was a lot of information and hopefully you can appreciate how much time it took to put this all together, covering all the different setups from budget friendly to super pro. I know we talked about a lot of gear, so go to the description. I have our gear guide linked below where everything we've mentioned and more is organized. Now, with all of this being covered, there is still a ton more that goes into shooting and editing professional video content. And for those of you who really wanna learn it all, 
at contentcreator.com, we have the world's most affordable speed training that walks you through everything. With over 140,000 students and tons of five-star reviews, this training has been proven time and time again to be the most cost-effective and efficient way to learn content creation skills for YouTube, social media, commercial production, travel videos, and so much more. We start from the ground up and cover all of the gear, the camera settings, how to light scenes like a pro, record and edit high quality audio, capture smooth and professional movements, how to tell stories, the secrets to going viral and building a brand, and tons of training on how to edit like a top 1% ninja. We include downloadable sound effects, color grading LUTs, discounts on editing software like Premiere Pro, an active student community where I personally host live weekly coaching calls, and anyone who enrolls using the link in the description beneath this video will also get two free bonus programs as well. Other than that, thanks so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one.